Good morning. We are live from EasyCon 2019, the 49th annual conference of Endocrine Society of India. And uh, we are in Nagpur. And right now, I have with me Dr. Peter Ebling, who is the head of medicine at Monash University, Melbourne, Australia. Over to you, sir. Thank you for that introduction. It's really good to be here in Nagpur, India, the home of oranges. I'm talking at the conference about osteoporosis in chronic kidney disease. And I think this is really important because as people get older, they have a high risk of getting osteoporosis, but they also have a high risk of getting chronic kidney disease. So really the message of my talk is to focus on how we investigate and treat patients for their osteoporosis when they have coexistent CKD. And I think there are a couple of important things to address. One is to diagnose hyperparathyroidism in these patients and to treat it adequately. The other is to diagnose adynamic bone disease uh, before we consider treatment with our anti-resorptive drugs for osteoporosis. So I think the parathyroid hormone levels are very important for both reasons and then when we're thinking about excluding adynamic bone disease, as well as the parathyroid hormone level, the bone-specific alkaline phosphatase level is also very important. Because in people where that's not high or it's low, then that may mean they're at risk of getting adynamic bone disease. So we take the combination of the parathyroid hormone and bone-specific alkaline phosphatase to exclude that group from treatment with anti-resorptive drugs. When we're treating the others, we would use maybe half the dose of the bisphosphonate we would routinely use. So we would use it every second week or half the dose weekly in those patients because it's renally excreted. And now the other drug we could use in those patients is denosumab. And when we're using denosumab in patients with CKD stage four or five, they're at risk of getting hypocalcemia after the injection. The most common time that occurs is 10 to 13 days after the denosumab injection. So it's really important to monitor the calcium level about a week or 10 days after they receive the denosumab injection to make sure the calcium isn't low. It's also really important to give them a calcium supplement and to make sure that their vitamin D levels are not low before we start treatment with denosumab. So, so these are really important things uh, when we're treating patients with CKD uh, that we need to do. Thank you so much. Thank you.